All right, a couple of good 4K cameras for you. Number one, PMW F5. Number two, PMW F55. We're going to start on the F5 today. So have a look right here for me. One thing I like about this camera is that they simplified the external controls. All right, so somewhat akin to an Alexa, <laughs> although Juan tells me this camera's been in production three years already. They haven't stolen anything from anybody. But on the outside here, you've got access to all of the most important features of your camera. You can turn on your slow and quick frame rate, right, if you need to do some overcranking and undercranking. You can change your shutter speed. You can change your color balance, your white, your white balance temperature, your gamma settings, and your ISO. You could also, if I had some uh, you know, microphones plugged in, you'd be able to meter your, your, your audio right there. Time code generator is here. If you wanted to switch into playback mode, check this out. Hit the view button. And now all those same buttons are just accessing your files, your start, stop, play, next, et cetera. I think that's a very, very smart design, unifying everything into one spot, just sort of jump around, almost like the, the VTR designations on their HD cam SR decks, uh, if, you're, if you're familiar with looking at those. All right, so really nice, really smart, bringing all the important features right out to the front of the camera. There, of course, is also a, a, an in-depth menu system. We could walk you through that, but one cool, totally awesome feature, externalized menu systems. Let's just take a quick look at the color temperature here for a second. When I hit this color temperature button, I'm able to select through three presets, tungsten, halfway between, and daylight, right? For 55, 43, and 32. Also, I can go into memory. Now, memory is where I can either perform my automatic white balance or, can you zoom in any, any closer there, James? All right, well, right now you're reading at 2956, but if I wanted to, I could crank through this in seven degrees Kelvin. So I can dial up and dial down my white balance temperature as necessary. So choose any of your presets, you know, step through it individually, or do an automatic white balance. Pretty versatile white balance feature. There is so much more that's cool about this camera, but this, this little one impressed me. I thought I would share that with you. Take a look right here. S by S card slots, all right? You're gonna be inserting your uh, S by S Pro cards. All right, check that out. S by S Pro Plus, 64 gigs. We're gonna get into codecs in a minute and discuss how much footage you can put on the 64 gigs, but I wanted to make it clear that it's important which S by S card you get based on the speed of communication between the camera and the card because we're, we're stepping into much higher data rates right now. Another thing you might notice is this brand new battery. All right, sure, you could put any V-mount battery on here, but Sony has released this new Olivine line of batteries. They are quick charge. They are lithium ion, but the chemistry inside is a little bit different, okay? Our buddy Chris Sloan, 2C Media, one of the first passengers on the Boeing 787, also an owner of some HD Cam SR decks. I mentioned the, uh, the 787 because you may have noticed they're battling with speed issues on their lithium ion batteries. This PMW F5 camera, no problem with 787 lithium ion heat, all right? Special new chemistry in these batteries, very low heat generation, and this battery is gonna power us for something like 280 minutes, 280 minutes, one of these batteries. There's a dual charger available for them, super quick charge, pretty awesome. But uh, more than just the battery, check this out. Two little DC out pins, all right? These are going to be two pin Limo connectors. You can power your wireless transmitters. You can power uh, wireless video transmitters, right? You can power your wireless audio receivers for your microphones. Very versatile. Nice to have a couple of, uh, of DC output plugs here. Additionally, when you remove the battery, you'll see there's a four pin power supply. So all of your standard existing batteries, your V-mount batteries, your four pin power supplies, all that stuff is gonna work. All that stuff is gonna power your camera. All right. Check out their, uh, <laughs> their ND filter wheel right here. Nice and big. No more tiny little knobs to, to, to mess with. You've got clear, you've got uh, 0.9, and you've got 1.8. Why, would you ask, do they have such massive uh, light stoppage on them, right? You're used to whatever, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9. Why is it going so high? The answer lies right here in the, behind this ISO button. So the camera's rated at a, at a 2,000 ISO. The PMW F5 is about a 2000. The PMW F55 is about a 1250. However, you can really crank this camera up. So I'm going to put us up to something ridiculous, all right? 6400. And rely on my audience. Virg, can we go to camera five here? Look at that. I got no light on the audience, and yet you can see them. Anyway, 6400 ISO, pretty sweet. Um, Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> right, so here we are. 
6400 ISO, now you can really see them. But if I jump into my 1.8 ND, that's why you've got such heavy duty ND filters on here because your ISO can crank up so high. So let's just pull that off for a second, give you an idea. With ND clear, you can really, really see. Let's, uh, let's just bring this down a little bit. So Debbie, uh, Debbie is our chat host. She's managing our uh, chat room. Who is it that's uh, watching from Amsterdam? Fur. All right, Fur, thanks for watching. And we have uh, people from all over. Yeah, fantastic. Arizona. Love it. Let's talk about a couple more physical features on this camera. Sometimes you might say to yourself, man, yeah, this camera's awesome, and I love to be able to plug stuff in and plug stuff out. But sometimes I just want to take this camera apart and make it really small. Let's go to James for a second. In the vein of taking the camera apart and making it small, you've got your standard dual XLR input here. But you see these two screws? That means that you can take this block right off. All right, if you want to get real small and skinny or perhaps fit it in an underwater housing where you're not going to record audio anyway, this audio block comes right off. Another block that comes off is this one. So time code, you can set a switch, whether your time code is coming in or going out, right? So that's your time code. You've also got a couple other quasi-useful stuff here. Genlock, if you're going to match a couple cameras up. Shutter, right, to so sync up the shutter on two cameras for doing 3D stuff. That's an even closer sync than your Genlock sync, right? Right down to the shutter closing. And uh, finally, a test out. That'll give you your vitally important composite video output. But this entire block, just like the audio block, removable. Take a couple of pins out of here, whoosh, and it's gone. Right here, you've got a uh, viewfinder output right next to your little lens, lens hook here, right? This is a 26-pin viewfinder output. You'll notice it's connected to my giant sideways flipping LCD viewfinder, OK? so. This guy can open up this way. He can open up this way and reveal his 3.5 inch uh, 1280 by 720 viewfinder. Pretty awesome. It's got expanded focus, all right? It's got, you know, color peaking, all the sort of focus features you rely on to, to keep your viewfinder information optimizing your production path. The camera ships with no viewfinder. You've got a couple options. We're going to discuss what options those are in a little while. What the camera does ship with is this badass handle, all right? Gone are the days of the wimpy, wimpy handles. This is a massive macho handle with something like 16 3 8 inch and 16 quarter 20 thread on it. There you are, in case you wanted to put lights, viewfinders, mounts, all kinds of stuff right in here. And you can tell that it's, it's nice and heavy duty. One way that you can tell, in fact, the only way that you can tell whether you are shooting on a PMW F5 or a PMW 55 is the color of this ring right here, all right? Now, this is a Sony EZ mount, FZ mount, FZ mount, all right? A couple quick things about the FZ mount. Number one, it's totally awesome. Number two, it's a shallow flange, which means you can adapt it to Minolta lenses, Leica lenses, Nikon lenses, Canon lenses, whatever you got. The flange depth is shallow enough that you can uh, adapt multiple lenses to it. Most importantly, Sony has sent in the box of both the F5 and the F55 a PL to FZ mount. So you can use Sony's 4K PL mount lenses or all the standard PL mount lenses you're talking about. Back to the way, the only way you can determine physically whether you're on an F5 or an F55, you see that this ring right here, this ring right here is black. On the F55, it's silver, all right? Otherwise, the form factor is identical. Form factor is identical. All right, um, that pretty much wraps up the physical description, the outside. Oh, no, it's important to note there's an HDMI, there's an HDMI output right here, OK? So HDMI is going to give you uh, 1920 by 1080 or 2K or 4K resolution. It's HDMI 1.4. So if you've got a 4K HDMI monitor that sends the little EDID information and requests 4K resolution, this camera is capable of pushing it out through its HDMI. Also, two main HDSDI outputs, those are always clean. Two sub HDSDI outputs, those can have, you know, viewfinder lens information on them so, so that your engineers can do whatever it is they do with the lens and viewfinder information. All right, um, here's your four pin power jack, pretty nice. Physical, uh, that was here, so there you are. Uh, and finally, this little remote jack right here means you can plug in your RMB750, your RMB150, whatever paint boxes that you already had for your hdwf 900s your F3s, your 320s. All of your existing paint boxes will operate 
on the PMW F5 and F55.